Hello everyone, Dr. Stillman here. And today we are going to be talking about what goes into your water and why it's super important. This comes to us from the epidemiological literature looking at concentrations of dissolved solids, which is a fancy way of saying minerals. These are things like calcium, magnesium, lithium, sodium, sulfates, carbonates. It's a long story. We're going to make it super short and super brief because that's really, there's not a whole lot to talk about here. It's a very um, interesting story with a lot of literature behind it, but the take homes are really simple. So this is the number one story on this that I, I think really sums up things nicely. So to make a long story short, people noticed early on in the history of epidemiology, we're talking the 30s, 40s, 50s, when they started to have large data sets for the first time that they could analyze, that things like all-cause mortality or cardiovascular mortality, which were becoming more and more common and killing more and more people, seem to correlate with levels of minerals in the groundwater. Minerals in the groundwater are really important. And over time, even though the doses coming in through groundwater to your body are small, they can have a really substantial impact on your overall mineral balance. In other words, you're getting nutrients from your water, whether you realize it or not. And missing nutrients can be just as important as an excess of nutrients. And trying to make up for a deficiency of nutrients in your water with nutrients and things like a multivitamin or some other form of supplementation, let alone dietary changes, I think may long-term uh, not work as well because things that are already dissolved in water are really easy for your body to digest. So in this paper, what they're talking about and what the take home from this is when they looked at the hardness of water, as far as did it really reduce mortality, they weren't able to find consistent and really significant results. What they did find is when they adjusted for the amount of magnesium in that water, they did get significant results. So when we talk about the mineral content of water, we have soft waters, which have negatively charged um, uh, anionic components like sulfates. And then we've got hard waters. Hard waters are called hard water because if you heat them in a uh, kettle or if they run through pipes for long periods of time, particularly in cold places, the minerals will actually deposit on the inside of the pipes or the inside of the tea kettle. And that's because of how it, the chemistry changes when it gets heated. Um, this means that a lot of people want to soften their water. That may not be a good strategy for long-term wellness, but I'm telling you it depends on the exact composition of the water. We're gonna compare and contrast some spring waters later on. So you can see in this paper um, that one of the things that they, they find is that your heart attack mortality increases as the water becomes softer and softer and more rich in these negatively charged anions. Another one of the, and this is an interesting chart where they look at mortality rates based on the water table. All of this is subject to a lot of confounding variables because you know, there's who's getting the water from where, is it from an aquifer, is it, or rather is it from groundwater, is it from a reservoir that's a municipal water source, is there perhaps other sources of pollution in the groundwater, how's it being filtered? Tons of variables here, so very hard to draw really, really serious um, conclusions. But once you start to look at the magnesium data, you see that the mortality rate tends to be lowest in the places where the magnesium rate is highest, okay? Magnesium deficiency is one of the most common things that I see in my practice. It's not present in, I'm going to say that not all of you will benefit from magnesium supplementation right now, but very few of you have an optimal total body magnesium level. And then when you look at the mortality rate, you see how it declines as magnesium levels go up. This is why I'm such a fan of measuring this metric and such a fan of high magnesium diets and why I think magnesium rich foods like oats are being inappropriately criticized in the health and wellness community today uh, because they're grains. I don't think people are being fair to the humble and yet glorious oat the way they should be. Why is this overall? It's because magnesium is important or critical rather for the generation of energy and magnesium is also controlling where calcium is going in the body. So we know magnesium deficiency leads to deposition of calcium in places within the body that it's not supposed to be. And that means that one of the key things I, I intervene on with patients is getting their magnesium levels to an optimal level before we do anything about their calcium. How big is this deal? It is suggested that in Canada, changes in the magnesium water concentration might amount to as much as a 30% lowering of all-cause mortality. That is an amazing reduction. Name me one other thing 
that can change all cause mortality that much. If this video has been helpful to you, make sure that you check out my link tree below to find out how you can keep in touch with me best. And if you would like to become a patient at my practice, please apply to work with me at stillmanmd.com. Thank you again for watching. Have a great day.